Now we're on to our last problem for 10-2. We're going to do 10-2 number 25. This is a two-tailed test, and you can tell it's a two-tailed test because in the instructions it says here, the quality control manager, blah, 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 blah. Ah, there it is, over or under filling. Over or under, meaning you can go high or low. Two tails, okay? Before I get into that, I wanted to show you what I did. I'm going to go... Oops, I got the data right here, right, 10 to number 25. I got that out of the um, data sets, downloadable data sets, and I put it right here. And then I went to one of these guys, and I copied and pasted into this. And I wanted you to see real quick, I added in the critical values are Z alpha. If it's a lower, then it's negative Z alpha. If it's an upper, it's positive Z alpha. And the test statistics are Z zero. That's the notation your book uses. So I added those in there just so you could see them. All right, so then I copied and pasted those in here. I'm going to need another cell. Let me write, highlight here, right click, insert, shift those down, that's fine. And I'm going to go back here and copy and paste it. I mean, why not? So let me go here. There we go. So I'm going to need two critical values, the lower one and the upper one, because this is two-tailed. All right, my first mission in life is to go in and find all this data. Now, the null hypothesis is given in the problem as target mean 64.05. So that's what I'm going to assume I've got unless I can prove it otherwise. So I'm going to type 64.05. The level of significance, um, they give it to you later in the problem. For part B, they tell you it's 0.01. So let me type 0.01. Population standard deviation also given later. It's 0.06 right there. So 0.06. Sample size, well, I don't know, but I can find it with the count program um, fun function. So if I say count and then I highlight all the data, hold on, it's going to take me a second to get down there. There we go. It figures out that there were 22 points in that data set or you could just type 22, you could count it yourself. The sample mean, well that will be the average, that's the command, the function, of all of these numbers, right? We learned how to find the mean way back in section, what was it, 3.1? All right, standard error. Well, this formula hasn't changed, right? It's still Standard deviation, sigma, right there, the blue box, divided by the square root of sample size. That's the beauty of copying and pasting. It's all there. All right, the lower critical value would be norm S inverse. Now, here's where we got to be careful. This is no longer alpha. It's alpha divided by 2 because this is a two-tailed test. So when we do this, what we have to do is we have to take alpha and divide it by 2, like that. And then we have to do the same thing for the complement. Right? Take alpha, 0.01, divide it by 2. You should get the same numbers here. One's negative, one's positive. The test statistic is still the standardized of this x bar right here, right? That for the standards, for the mu, and this is the standard error. So that's all set. And we are definitely rejecting H0 here, which is good. That's the first time we've rejected H0. So let me go subscript 0. And then comma. I'm gonna un I'm gonna unsubscript from this point on. I'm being crafty. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But I reject H naught because Z0 is less than negative Z alpha over two. I guess I could insert the symbol. Over two. Right, in other words, this number right here is lower than this. Right, the p-value is no good. The p-value is doing the high one. We would need to find two times that. That's the p-value. Two times the norm s dist of this test statistic, right, which is very small, well below 0.01. Therefore, we reject because p is less than alpha. All right, there we go. We're done with that problem. Now you've seen it two-tailed. All right, I'll see you for 10-3.